executive director for the Pro Progressive Coders Network, and he'll show you how to help build movements using just a few lines of code. All right, let's give him a round of applause and get this going. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name's Rappi. I'm, uh, I have to just declare this, I am a gay immigrant from Queens, New York. And thank you. And during these times, I feel like it has to be repeatedly said whenever I have a chance. So here I am exclaiming that. <laughs> so I'm talking about um, learn and impact. Uh, so what it takes for me to go from Bernie Sanders to Progressive Coders Network. So you can check it out at progcode.org. Um, and it brings us back to April 2015. So I'm just going to tell you a story. <laughs> um, April 2015, uh, two years after I have arrived in, in New York, um, I didn't have health care. I just paid $700 because I had a stomach flu. And around that time, I also wanted to learn D3. So D3.js is a JavaScript library for data visualization. And I was like, oh, wow, I really want to learn more about these hex things that, they, that I've been seeing all across the internet. So why not check it out and learn it? And um, around that same time as well, as you know, um, some guy named Bernie Sanders, um, my, my husband who's from Vermont actually told me that this white dude from Vermont is running for president. <laughs> and he's giving us free stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to check this dude out. And um, yeah, maybe. It's, and I was like, oh, wow, he wants free college. My sister came in here. Um, she, she couldn't afford college, so she went to the Navy. Um, she wants, like, she's, he's saying that uh, healthcare is a right. I just had a stomach flu, and I paid $700. And, and I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I have, I have to support this dude. And I wanted to go to events and talk about why or how I could support him. And when I went to the internet to look for the events, and it was, that the events were just scattered slow, and I have to wait for 15 seconds in the Bernie Sanders website to just get the list of events. 15 seconds, <laughs> and and the meetup is just I have to have I have to be like an SEO specialist because I have to like type in okay Bernie <laughs> events plus whatever, <laughs> or even in Facebook. And I was like, man, this is this is not sustainable. And I was like, maybe I could check it out and and make something out of it. So I made a hex map which shows all the events in different states using the skills I learned from you know, studying the website. Uh, studying D3.js, oh, I could do this. I could align this with my passion, which is now apparently Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and I did, it in, I did it in two weeks. In, in two weeks, uh, this thing that helped people, helped me initially to look for events for Bernie, to curate the events across the United States. And apparently, it helped a lot of people as well. So much so that the campaign reached out to me and said, hey, um, we're getting a lot of events now. Maybe you could help us out with, with building a map for it. And I said, sure. And we created this map. And apparently, it, it housed 5,000 events each day in every given day for the rest of the campaign. And it all started from me learning D3. And now, it, in total, it hosted or it showed 80,000 events, which helped guide tens and thousands of volunteers to, to, you know, to phone bank, to canvas, to reach out to their neighbors and just talk. And it all happened in the span of, of three weeks. Um, imagine the power of like just from learning. And I'm happy to report that I, I learned D3.js as well. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> um, and um, I, it, was, it was a fun experience. I learned. I, I made an impact. I helped uh, thousands and thousands of volunteers to, to go to events. And I was like, OK, maybe I'm not the only one. And true enough, it was just not me. Um, someone created a how to register. Apparently, someone didn't know how to register, so he created a website for it. <laughs> uh, and it, it was, as you can see, it was visited by 700,000 people. And it was liked and spread out throughout the, the Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Someone wanted to help engage their friends in Facebook. So they created socialroots.io. And it helped. like. Uh, Tens and thousands of people reach out to their friends in Facebook, messaging them, hey, do you know about this issue? Do you know about that? And, and all of this, from, from, from that whole like, movement or, or individuals of people like just wanting to code and create change along the way, we created this group called Coders for Sanders. It's all in Reddit. And we just wanted to like, you know, converge and find ways on how to help, uh, help each other further and help the movement further. And 
and apparently it became the largest scale experiment of a non-hierarchical organizing and innovation because what happens then, thank you, <laughs> what happens then is, is that you have these spread out from different parts of, of the United States, you know, just learning together, you know, working together collaboratively and self-organizing. Each and every single one spread out. They don't have a leader, they don't have a supervisor, but they just want change. And the best way they could do change is through coding. And that's why we created this movement. And, and because of that structure, there were 3,000 members that created 84 applications in the span of nine months. Nine months. It, for, for a simple project to start, it, it would have to have like six months for product, product development. These were created within the span of nine months, 84 applications. And it was partly one of which were how to make phone banking fun. So phone banking is when you call your neighbors, call your community and say, hey, do you want, could I talk to you about the issues? Do you want to know more about Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton? And they made a way for them to visualize that from one point to another and keep scorecards along with it. So it became more of a competitive feel. And this was done by three volunteers with the Coders for Sanders movement. Um, another, and, and someone was just not happy about the, the scorecard. So he said, maybe we could use this to raise funds so that if, some, if they reach a 30,000 uh, 30, calls limit, we could have like, we could raise 8,000 for it. So this, this application was created on top of the, the phone banking game. And this was created by a 14 year old. And it was helped, he was helped by three coders within that community. So there's this energy of like, just let's organize, let's do change. And, and the best way we could do about it is through coding. And after, after that, we, we, after, after Bernie you know, conceded, like he, he lost. Um, <laughs> no, after, after he conceded uh, during the primaries, um, we said we, we, can, we shouldn't stop from here. We shouldn't stop here. We should continue on, and we created Progressive Coders Network. And what Progressive Coders Network sees now is that during that time, right, like all these energy, 84 applications, 3,000 volunteers, and all throughout, we saw how expensive campaigns are because, like, campaigns can be a like for you to have a viable campaign, a, a digital campaign, as a counselor, even in, in Los Angeles, you would have to have $3,000 per month in order for you to run your digital campaign. $3,000 per month, and that goes for the voter file, which you use to know who your neighbors are, CRMs for you to reach out those neighbors, phone banking for you to call those neighbors, canvassing for you to reach out and door knock those neighbors, and peer-to-peer -peer texting so that you can pester them. <laughs> and, um, and that's a lot. That's why there's this huge influence of money in politics, because you need that to reach out to your neighbors. And, it's basically that, right? Like for you to have a viable campaign, you need this money. So by the end of the day, you're able to talk to your neighbors. And, and that's such a silly thing for you to rely on big money. If you just need to communicate something to your, to your, to your friend, to your community, to your leader, to your, to your priest, to your pastor, there has to be some form of, of way for us to, to, to build that. And what we think in Progressive Coders Network is for us to remove the influence of money, we should rely on open source tools, on open source and low cost uh, software. And that means it's a collaborative effort, the same effort we've been doing for the Bernie Sanders campaign, but more so in a general sense. And what that means is that we're creating open source voter files, open source CRMs, open source phone banking, open source everything, and push that, that price tag to zero dollars a month because now we just have to really buy into the idea of that candidate and which reflects our community. And if it reflects our community, then we will do everything we can to push for that agenda. So it's more about how can we reflect our community, but at the same time, remove the influences of this big money forces. And that's where I think, I truly believe that open source solutions can, can, can flourish. And aside from that, there is this idea of persistence in open source, aside from pushing that boundary down to zero dollars, we saw during the Bernie Sanders campaign, there's this application called Bernie BNB, which is like a Bernie Sanders version for Airbnb, wherein it helped volunteers find housing. And it was an open source solution, but after Bernie lost, 
in the general election, Hillary, Hillary's, Hillary, uh, com Hillary's campaign used it as a Hillary BNB. And after the, the, the general elections, um, the Hillary BNB became March BNB, which was used by, for the women's, com women's March campaign. And now it's being used by the climate March people to use as a March BNB, and so on and so forth. So there's this persistence in the movements for these open source solutions. So true enough, after Hillary lost the general election, sad as it may, um, but there was this huge, huge uh, influx of, of energy from, from the movements. We saw it from the Indivisible Group. We saw it from RISE. We saw it from Lawyers for Good Government. 130,000 lawyers, for Christ's sake. Like, two weeks, 130,000 lawyers. Women's March and Movimiento Cosecha. All of them trying to defend the movements or the, the communities they support. And what we saw during that time is that there was this huge issue with capacity and scale. Um, because of that huge growth, because of that fast growth, they were not able to use, do that in all volunteer capacity. But, but, but true enough, um, the tools that we made for Bernie came in, came in really handy for some reason. Because of the persistence of open source tools, because of the, the, the breadth of, of the energy of those 84 applications from 3,000 volunteers, we're able to make this. And as you, as you remember, um, this was my practice case for D3JS, and, and it was used as the bus finder, if you go to bus buses.womensmarch.com right now, you will see this exact thing. And we helped 2,000 buses, 2,000 buses uh, bring in folks from different states. There was one, actually, seriously, there's one from Alaska. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Washington State, I'm sorry. And also, I think Alaska, hardcore. And um, so 2,000 buses. Uh, in comparison, during the, the Trump's inauguration, there were 120 buses. For Women's March, there were 2,000. And this, this bus helped them out in terms of, of navigating that process. And, and true enough, it became a best practice. The hex map became a best practice for, for transportation for huge scale conferences. And you remember the map we did for Bernie? It's now the indivisible guide map to house in 6,000 groups to help people in your neighborhood find groups near them. And now we see this dynamic, right? Um, we're looking at it from the old perspective and the new one. We're, in, we're seeing that during this time, the old thinking is that we saw during the campaign that there is such a huge risk aversion for campaigns to even innovate. People don't want to touch new innovation because there's such huge time, like time's so limited, uh, resources very limited, so why can we invest in innovation, right? So there's none of it. Um, and, and now, um, there's also too short a time for adoption and onboarding. So for, for us to even create an application during a campaign, you only have two months to really ha get users to start using it, and that's not enough time for you to, to get that spread out. So once you create that, and th this goes to the next, campaign, next point, which is when, you, when a campaign ends, the resources goes along with it, and so does tech. So there's this two-month period for you to get it viral, and then after the campaign, there's no more resources. So there's no point for you to really invest on any of this, uh, any of this products, any of this innovation. So we're stuck with the old thinking. But what we're saying right now is because of these things of persistence, of cheapness, of, of, of energy-driven, community-driven um, development of these applications, we're seeing how we're no longer reliant on campaigns for resources, but we are reliant on the energy of the community. We're no longer reliant on time because we have an unlimited time. We can start right now. We are starting right now for the 2018 campaigns. We are starting right now for, for, for more campaigns in the future or for more movements in the future because the knowledge base indef indefinitely grows. When you push something in GitHub right now or when you push something in the repository, it stays there and it just adds on. And that's where the open source community really shines. And after the campaign ends, movements still can be alive. We're no longer relied on, reliant on the resources that these, these campaigns provide us. And, and, and that's my case. Um, going back, on two, in April 2015, I really just wanted to learn more about D3. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really glad and proud to say that along with it, we started the movement. So thank you. Um, we are, thank you. <laughs> We have, um, we, we have progressive hack nights every 
every Tuesday here in New York. Check us out. So proghacknight.com. <laughs>